And as soil moisture becomes a greater concern, no-till cropping becomes more attractive. So earlier this year, we met with Extension Soil and Water Conservation Specialist Jason Morin to explain why. All right, Jason, here at Lahoma, we've got quite a bit of research going with no-till right here. Talk to us, what do we got here of these crops? Oh, real quickly, we've got some uh, soybeans, corn, sunflowers, um, sorghum, some of which are double crops, some of which are um, full season, you know, early planted crops. And then we have uh, wheat. Some of these plots are in continuous wheat, uh, cultivated continuous wheat, and then some of them are in uh, continuous no-till wheat. And what we've been looking at here recently in these uh, plots is soil moisture content, because mm -hmm. we want to answer the question is, how do these more intense cropping systems, such as double crop soybeans or sorghum, how does that impact soil moisture and how will it impact the following crop? not only from a yield perspective, but then to learn how moisture and the dynamics of changing soil moisture after rainfall events um, or after tillage impact soil moisture for potential use by the next crop. And that's something a lot of people are having on their minds right now. We've had some really hot temperatures in the last few weeks. Yep, that's we right. We had some good rainfalls earlier this week. Yep. So what do we expect to see conventional to no-till in terms of that soil moisture? Yeah. Well, one, one thing we've, we've recently gotten take, uh, done is a data analysis on the no-till continuous wheat versus the no-till or the conventional tillage wheat. Okay. And that allows us to look at the summer fallow period right. and see how we recharge that soil after the wheat comes off and how we lose water during these 100 to 105 degree days. Right. And what we find is when we till soils, we open that soil up, we remove the surface residue, and we increase evaporative water loss. And in general, um, and you know, an easy rule of thumb is in cultivated land, we can get, you know, say, a two inch rainfall, we get nice, good infiltration, but then a week later, we can have an inch less water in the top 15 inches due to evaporative water loss compared to the no till. And that difference will be maintained until it rains again it recharges that both systems to an equal amount and then we have a drying effect in the cultivated land that dries it out to a greater degree than our no-till land. All right, so we're looking at a much more fluctuating system in the conventional. Yeah, that's really a, a good take-home message is no-till provides a more stable system with respect to soil moisture because you don't get those dramatic fluctuations in soil moisture at the near surface. Okay, so I guess it's sort of an insurance system at that. that you know. to, to some degree, yes it is. And you know, even talking to producers, you know, they, they'll tell me that, uh, well, their yields may not have increased, but they very much stabilized compared to when they were in a cultivated system. And a lot, and per, that's even more important as we move westward. Here in Lahoma, you know, we're right around the 30 to 35 inch rainfall period, mm -hmm. um, um, annual rainfall. As you move westward, um, towards uh, the Texas Panhandle, you get less and less rainfall, and these kind of analysis become more and more important, particularly if you're trying to intensify your crop rotation, because as we move westward, we need to depend more on subsoil moisture than we do as we move eastward. Um, and so some of these analysis become very important. And what you're saying with no-till is that when you're depending on that subsoil moisture, you're gonna have a more consistent year-to-year level throughout the cropping season? Uh, uh, to some extent, given that everything is equal and the only variable is tillage, you're going to have a more consistent um, elevated amount of moisture. And it's mainly due to the, sub, or the surface soil drying out and wetting up and drying out during dry periods and rainfall periods. You don't get that, or that dramatic drying in no-till that you do in cultivated systems. All right. And you know, everybody can observe that when you cultivate, it dries out. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. It's good information. We'll be keeping an eye on it. All right. Thank you, sir. Yep.